everybody. This is the updated version of the respiratory alkalosis video to correct for some um, mistakes that were in the last video. This is very confusing. This is something that you might have to go over multiple times. Um, however, I'm going to try to break it down the best I can with all this new information that I have to make sure that everything's correct. Y'all understand and that we are getting somewhere with this. So let's go over respiratory alkalosis. So what's going on? Same anatomy of what's going on with respiratory acidosis. Watch that video if you haven't already. It's got it's updated and it's all good to go now. Um, so what's happening is it's going to be a problem with the ability for the lungs to breathe properly. So what we're going to see is alkalemia in the blood. So when something becomes more alkaline, that means that we are getting higher up on the pH scale. Remember, normal blood pH is between 7.35 and 7.45. If we're alkalotic, that means we're going higher up on that scale, which means our blood pH is going to be higher than 7.45. So that's what's going on with the anatomy. So what are some conditions that can cause respiratory alkalosis? I would like to correct for the mistake in the previous lecture. Uh, restrictive lung diseases will cause respiratory alkalosis. So like where there's like a decrease for the lungs to expand for you to be able to get air in, all of that stuff, that's going to cause respiratory alkalosis. Other causes of this will be pulmonary embolism, again, blocking air from getting in, going to cause problems with respiratory uh, alkalosis. We're going to see sepsis. So any sort of infections in the bloodstream are going to cause the blood to become more alkalotic. So we will see sepsis causing that hyperthyroidism. So high levels of thyroid hormone being released. Remember, this is called Graves disease. There's a video on that if you want to check that out as well. Um, and so that will cause an increase in the respiratory rate, hyperventilation. Um, that's going to clear out a lot of CO2, drop the CO2 level. And then that's what's going to be causing um, all this stuff with respiratory alkalosis. So those are the conditions that can cause respiratory alkalosis. Medications that can cause this can be nicotine because that's going to speed up your respiratory rate. And then catecholamines. So remember, those are our norepinephrine, epinephrine, dopamine. All of that stuff's going to speed up your respiratory rate. If you see your respiratory rate speeding up, and you're hyperventilating and you're tachy tachypnic and everything, tachypnea, whatever, that all means that we're leaning towards respiratory alkalosis. Think about it when you breathe really, really fast. You're like, <sighs> what's happening is when you breathe out really, really fast, what's happening is you're clearing out all that CO2 from your body. And so we're going to have a decrease in the level of partial pressure of CO2. When we have that decrease in the level of partial pressure of CO2, that means that there's less uh, CO2 floating around the blood, bonding with the hydrogen ions, trying to create carbonic acid. There's less carbonic acid in the blood now because we're clearing out all that CO2. So what's happening is all of these like ions just are kind of floating around and starting to become more um, alkaline. So that's kind of what's going on. So other influences that can cause respiratory alkalosis can be high altitude. So you breathe faster there. Trauma, you're breathing faster when you're in pain, traumatic stuff like that. Anxiety attacks. Anybody who's had an anxiety attack, they know they know you're 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 going too fast. It's too much. And then fever again, any sort of infection, sepsis, all that stuff, going to increase your respiratory rate. When we see an increase in respiratory rate, we should be thinking respiratory alkalosis. So if you're looking at something, you're like, this makes someone breathe faster. Respiratory alkalosis. All right, and so because it's causing hyperventilation. So I kind of already explained what's happening is you're seeing a decrease in the partial pressure of CO2 in the blood. And so remember our normal range is 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury, a partial pressure of CO2. What we're seeing is a decrease. So we're seeing less than 35 millimeters of mercury of uh, partial pressure of CO2. So that's hypocapnia. So hypo low capnia being CO2. Alkalosis would mean that the blood pH is going to be over 7.45. So and the important thing to remember with respiratory alkalosis and acidosis is what's happening with the partial pressure of CO2 and then what's happening with the blood pH. Whatever direction the blood pH is going, the um, partial pressure of CO2 is going the opposite way. So if blood a pH is going down, CO2 is going up. If CO2 is going uh, down, then pH is going up. Think of it that way and that will be a lot more helpful to remember this. So what does it look like? We're also going to see this cyanosis and clubbing of the digits when it comes to respiratory alkalosis. This is a common one that shows up with pretty much all respiratory conditions if we're having an issue with perfusion of oxygen. Um, what we're going to see is hypocapnia, so blood uh, partial pressure of CO2 that is less than 35 millimeters of mercury. You'll be able to see these lab values if you're in acute care and have like somebody who's talking about um, 
all of the lab values that you can get from the arterial blood gas. You're gonna see hyperventilation. So anybody who's breathing faster, remember hyperventilation is a respiratory rate that's gonna be above 20 uh, re respirations per minute. And like at this point, it's gonna be like 30, 40 kind of thing. Um, the patient may present with some of the following. So as their breathing increases, their heart rate usually goes along with it. It's like, oh, we going fast. What's going on? Kind of thing. Um, you're going to see uh, your heart rate goes up. Um, your uh, respiratory rate goes up. So this says 16. It should say 20. So I will correct that in the PowerPoint. Um, so respiratory rate above 20. You're also going to see uh, out dizziness. So they're going to be kind of out of it and everything. I don't know if you've ever like breathe really fast and try to stand up you see I don't know like there was a like trend going around with all these kids like breathe really fast and then they stand up and then they get dizzy and pass out um that's what's happening you're becoming respiratory alkalotic um so you'll see your pH is going above 7.45 and you can be cyanotic all right, guys, um, how are we treating it? So again, same kind of condition as respiratory acidosis. We're going to let this patient be stabilized if they're in an acute episode of respiratory alkalosis. So any sort of um, acute respiratory distress, we're sending them to the ER. So this person's going to go to the ER. They're going to get uh, whatever they need to calm everything down and get the blood back to normal. Um, I'm not sure exactly what they concoct up in there to get it back to normal, but we're going to leave that to somebody who makes a lot more than us. Um, in physical therapy, again, we're treating the patient alongside whatever condition they have. So whatever restrictive lung disease or dysfunction that they have, hyperthyroidism, so Graves' disease or pulmonary embolism, whatever's going on. Um, again, pulmonary embolism is going to be a medical emergency as well, but I'm talking about the aftercare of a pulmonary embolism. What are we doing? So just want to make that clarification. So same thing as respiratory acidosis. We're just going to treat the patient for what we know and just, you know, make sure we're aware. Okay, so this is like a complication that could arise from this condition. Let's just monitor vital signs, check SpO2, check arterial blood gas levels if we're able to. Make sure everything looks good. And if something's looking wonky, it's better to ask rather than say, mm, I can do it because nobody's ever like, like if you, even if someone's like, why are you asking me, blah, blah, blah. Like you've charted and like somebody saw that you asked. So you have covered your butt. So always do that. You will never regret it in the court of law if you double check something. All right, guys, keywords are going to be hypocapnia. So remember, that's the partial pressure of CO2 going lower than uh, 35 millimeters of mercury. We'll see a blood pH greater than 7.45. So that'll be alkalemia, hyperventilation. So the breathing really fast. Somebody who's had a history of a pulmonary embolism or um, has hyperthyroidism. So Graves' disease, those would be people who would present with... Um, respiratory alkalosis, the tachycardia, tachypnea. So again, tachycardia would be respiration, would be um a heart rate higher than 100 uh, at rest. So remember, like if you're running, obviously it's going to go up higher, but if you're just sitting there at rest and you're at 120, that's tachycardia. Um, then tachypnea would be a respiratory rate higher than 20. And then high altitude can also cause this as well. So let's get into the sample question. A physical therapist assistant is examining the lab values of a patient in an acute care setting. The physical therapist assistant notes that this patient is susceptible to respiratory alkalosis, so their lab values need to be monitored frequently. Which patient would most likely exhibit this condition? One, a patient with Hashimoto's disease. Two, a patient with Graves' disease. Three, a patient with emphysema. Or four, a patient with bronchitis. So I'll give you guys a second to think about that. All right, guys, so the answer is going to be a patient with Graves' disease. So Graves' disease is hyperthyroidism. That is one of the conditions that we realize can cause uh, respiratory uh, alkalosis because of the increase in respiratory rate. So they're breathing really fast. <laughs> yeah, we're going to see problems with that. That's going to cause problems when it comes to our ability to... Um, you know, do things that we're supposed to do and breathe and maintain our normal, normal blood pH. So we're going to see that that's going to increase the respiratory rate, clear out a lot of CO2, partial pressure CO2 drops, CO2 does not bond with carbonic acid or with hydrogen to create carbonic acid, our blood pH still stays high. That's all going to make sense. Now, Hashimoto's disease is going to be a hypothyroidism. So that is not going to cause an increase in respiratory rate. A patient with emphysema, that is a type of obstructive lung disease. Remember, we talked about that obstructive lung diseases are going to cause respiratory acidosis. So if you haven't watched that video, go watch it. This is a correction from the previous uh, explanation. So emphysema is a type of 
obstructive lung disease going to cause uh, a decrease in the ability for the body to um, clear out CO2 because it's an issue getting air out. And so what's going to happen is just going to build up and become more acidotic. Same thing with bronchitis. Bronchitis falls under an obstructive lung disease, falls under the umbrella of COPD. And so we're going to see that that's going to cause respiratory acidosis. I hope this was helpful, guys. It's a little confusing. I would watch these videos together, like one after the other, uh, and then go into the obstructive restrictive lung diseases. It'll all kind of come together and make sense if you watch all four of these in conjunction. All right, guys, take care, and I will see you on the next one.